Hello and welcome to episode 79 of the Arena Regulars podcast. I'm Zach. And I'm Jeff. And we're your source for weekly drunken Magic the Gathering Arena content. That's right, just two regular dudes drinking some irregular beers and we're talking about Magic the Gathering, in particular the online client MTG Arena. And tonight we are talking about the newest format for MTG Arena. It is Explorer. Um, yeah, it came out about a, a month ago. Has it been a month yet? Sounds about right. So, something like that. So we just wanted to check up on it and see how it's doing. Uh, but first, each week we both bring a beer, we drink Jeff's, then drink mine, rate them on a scale of bronze to mythic, and choose the best for last. So with that, Jeff, what's on tap? All right, we're closing out our Collective Arts Tap Takeover with a series they do called Origin of Darkness. This is where they pair up with other breweries and make a Imperial Stout that is aged in some sort of barrel. Uh, So the one that I've selected is an Imperial Stout aged in rum barrels with coffee, almonds, lactose, and speculus cookies? Speculus? I don't know. Speculus cookies. (laughs) Some kind of cookie. (laughs) For this one, they teamed up with Vitamin C Brewing, and that's C-S-E-A. This guy's 10.3%. My God. (sighs) (laughs) <laughs> they come in the small uh, 355 mil cans, but woof, um, we have a night ahead of us. Um, before <laughs> we get into some magic stuff, we have some regular news. Um, next week, I'm going to be out of the country visiting my family for the first time since 2019, so we're gonna we're gonna, not going to have an episode next week, so just get ready for that. Get ready for it. I don't know. Um, wait till the week after, um, but uh, no, it'll be good. More likely, like, go to listen to the episode realize it's not there and then remember we said this yeah exactly um (laughs) (laughs) uh but we do have some magic news so this thursday june 2nd the streets of new capena alchemy set of 30 new cards will be live on arena um it will also be accompanied by a draft event from june 2nd to the 6th so this draft is with alchemy cards but it is the main like Streets of New Capena draft set, but one of the commons has been replaced with one of the alchemy cards. It it seems like a nice way to try to help you draft some of the cards to get it into your collection because that's a big problem in the alchemy sets coming out. Um, so we'll see if it, it helps helps you get more of the cards. Not many of them get opened, but you get some. Um, also, maybe it'll make the draft format more exciting. Maybe one of the colors will be better. <laughs> maybe. Maybe. <laughs> so is it like every pack, one of the commons is a an alchemy card? Yes. Nice. Yeah, I really like that idea. I don't know if I'll play in it, but uh, I think it's a really cool idea because, you know, one of the major complaints about these things is that the only way to get them is through wild cards. and so giving you a way to draft them is is great. Yeah. Also, with the wild card thing, they have mentioned that they changed the uh, rarities, so there will be more uncommon cards. Now, there's still mythics in the set, um, but I think they just kind of downshifted some of the rarities to make them easier or more accessible. So that is good. I don't know if it's going to fix anything. I don't know if people are going to... Be really stoked, but you know they really have to get people on board with alchemy because all summer is just alchemy cards. So right. you, they got to do something. <laughs> yeah, my prediction is that people will still complain, but that's mm-hmm. just me. Um, and also, like down ticking mythics to rares actually makes them less accessible for me in particular because I have, <laughs> I actually have mythic wild cards and I have no rare wild cards. So. Uh, it should be like an option. You should always be able to use a mythic on a wild card on a rare if you want. That would be nice. Um, I have a bunch of all of them, so I don't worry about it. Oh, <laughs> I do also you? I don't brew decks, so I don't craft <laughs> cards very often. Um, anyway, uh, there's also a like pre-constructed free deck event this weekend as well, like they did with the last alchemy set. Um, so if you just want to play some of the cards and play some pre-constructed decks. There you go, it's free, and you get free alchemy packs. So I like that they're continuing to do this. Um, Good job. Yep, it's always fun. And one other random thing is uh, with all the alchemy cards coming in, um, you don't have to worry about your cards not being legal or in standard or alchemy. Uh, If you build a deck with one of the cards that's being rebalanced, um, 
If you join a standard queue, it will just automatically make it the standard card. And if you join an alchemy queue, it will automatically make it the alchemy card. You don't have to go back in and make new deck lists with the same cards or accidentally add the wrong version to your standard deck or, or your alchemy deck or blah, 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 whatever. Um, seems like it took them way too long to fix this, but... Uh, yeah, I didn't even realize that this isn't how it worked because I... I just imagine it must work this way. But. Yeah, well, remember when we like you first were building decks and you're like trying to put a Seekus Chariot in your deck and it kept saying, this isn't the right Asikas Chariot. Oh, yeah, yeah. And you're like, what yeah, the hell? Wasn't... Yeah, and it was like such a pain in the ass. Well, now they're just making it intuitive like they should have at the beginning. But anyway. Right, like you can never have both versions of a Seekus Chariot in your deck. So just if I click a Seekus Chariot and I'm selected Alchemy, give me the Alchemy one. Yeah. <laughs> So, yay! Finally, some <laughs> much-needed changes. Um, it may be too little too late, but we will have to see. All right, Jeff, but this episode we're talking about Explorer. Uh, so no no rebalancing, no buffs, no nerfs, none of that. Um, just regular old cardboard cards that are digital. <laughs> <laughs> regular old digital cardboard. <laughs> <laughs> so have you been playing some Explorer over the last month or so? Yeah, I've actually jumped into way more leagues of this than I thought I would. Um, <clears throat> or, sorry, events. What, what are they called? Just events. They're events, yeah. Yeah. Uh, way more... But I feel like when I say events, I mean anything. Like, that could be a constructed tournament on MTG Melee, or it could be, like, a draft. Yeah, so I guess you have to specifically say um, traditional explorer event is what you're playing. Okay. <laughs> the old T-E-E. Yeah. Um, so I was, I was teeing off more than expected. And... Uh, <laughs> Uh, but, you know, jokes aside, could we just say how much I love these things? Like, this is the only way I play now. Absolutely. I'm like double bronze, not planning on moving. I'm like bronze with no stars or whatever. <laughs> yeah. Uh, bronze four, no no progress towards bronze three. Because, I don't know, it's just so nice that I can play like two or three games and feel like I'm actually making progress, like, you know, in a night if I don't have time to grind. And so now I just basically exclusively play these yeah that's exactly how i feel too because i can i have a better understanding of how well my deck did it and like and all the games also feel like they matter like i'm not gonna uh scoop as quickly because sometimes you're on the ladder and you're like ah let's uh, there's just no way and you just like scoop and you just kind of like give up that matchup if you're in an event you're like well i do have money on the line so i have to try <laughs> right it matters and sometimes mm -hmm. in ranked it just doesn't matter like you are as low in that tier as you can go so losing doesn't actually matter um, or you've won a bunch in a row so you know that losing won't like push you down or whatever yeah and so and and also you don't have to go through the whole like oh man i want to be competitive this month but i didn't get a chance to play for a while so now i have to like slog through all the way up to diamond from bronze which is like, it usually doesn't take that long or whatever, but I don't know. It, you're already playing against real opponents and matches that matter from, from the get-go. But yeah, I love these things, and I've played a bunch of them. And I've brewed a bunch of wild decks. That's where all my crazy wild cards went. To <laughs> uh, <laughs> uh, debunk uh, explorer decks. But I've been having a lot of fun with it. Like My initial impression is just, yeah, I think it's starting to flush out that we know what some of the best decks in the format are. <clears throat> Those are the decks that you just see like two to three times every time you jump into one of these uh, traditional Explorer events. But it's still, you never know what you're going to run into. Sometimes you just run into some wacky stuff and it's actually kind of cool and you're like, I'm not rooting for my opponent, but I kind of am because <clears throat> what they're doing is pretty sweet. Uh, <laughs> and so I'm just that's just where the format seems to be at right now. Like, on its way to being sort of solved, where I think we know some of what are going to be some of the top players going forward, um, but people don't even seem to agree on those, and and there's so much room for like crazy decks or even just cards that you don't normally get to play against or with. What are the decks that you are playing right now? Like, what are the ones that people know about? And we can save some of the brews for later, so so there's some nuggets uh, <laughs> later in the episode, but like. What was the first deck that you picked up that you're like, this is what I'm going to be playing um, until you kind of uh, wanted to branch off? Yeah, definitely Anvil, Rakdos Anvil, mm -hmm. <clears throat> which, um, so there was that Explorer event um, a while ago, 
the, what are those ones? The <laughs> metagame challenge. The, they're all just called events. That's the metagame uh, challenge. It's different. <laughs> <laughs> I played in that one. I got lucky, and I managed to go 7-0. So then I was like, this is the best deck in the format. Uh, and now I've been playing it, and I think it's probably like tier 2, but mm-hmm. pretty good kind of thing. Um, not as good as the best decks in the format, but still, it can always win against pretty much anyone. Uh, and so I played a whole bunch of leagues with that, and then then I started to branch out into some crazy decks. But in terms of the decks people will know about, that's probably the only one. That's that's. I mean, I knew that you were playing Anvil everywhere, but um, I wasn't sure if you kind of morphed it a little bit in Explorer or not, because um, I know Rakdos is a big deck in Explorer, but more mid rangey. Um, mm-hmm. I have the privilege of having the deck I was playing get banned because Winota got banned. Um, right. So then I hadn't. So how did you? What did you do? Yeah, I, I, I wasn't like super down Please about tell it. Me it's not Storm Chaser Drake or whatever. <laughs> <laughs> it's so close to Storm Chaser Drake that like I don't even like. <laughs> um, You're like, ooh, I forgot about that card. I oh, should I should put that in there. Like, um, <laughs> no, so I, I wasn't playing anymore, and I was kind of not down on the format, but I was just like, oh well, you know. Uh, my Winotas, I can't use them, and that's what I like had built, but I didn't really craft that many cards for it, mainly it's just tough. the Winotas. You need like, inspiration to strike before you pick it up again, right? Like, what am I going to play now? Exactly, and I had to go, I knew I had to go find one, and sometimes I, I would just want to like get a random game in on my phone, and then if I don't have a mm-hmm. deck list, then I can't play that format because I'm not going to try to build a deck on my phone. Like, that's the worst. Right. Oh my god, this is the worst experience ever. It's so <laughs> irritating. So, um,. Anyway, I was net decking because that's what I like doing, and uh, I saw that's that. A good place to start. Yeah, I saw that um, uh, Mono Blue Spirits was a thing, and I was like, okay, I'll play Mono Blue Spirits. That has like some rogue feel to it. I love playing like flash creatures with uh, counter spells, um, and it has been wonderful. I've really, uh, really, really enjoyed it. Yeah, I think that deck's actually pretty good too. I've ran into it a few times, and it was always. It's always like a little better than you think mm-hmm. every time you play against it. Because you're like, wait a minute, all of these like craptastic cards really do add up to a package that is tough to deal with. The thing about it is that I've never thought it seemed good because like Rattle Chains was always a card that it costs like thirty cents in paper, and it always seemed to be one that you just get and be like, oh great, Rattle Chains, this card sucks. You kind of throw it to the side, <laughs> but then when you play with it, you're like, wait, this card's really good. <laughs> Oh, it's so obnoxious! Yeah, yeah. <laughs> it like protects one of your things and then gives every, everything else flash. It's just like, oh, okay. Um, no, I actually like this card. Maybe I should buy some of those thirty cent cards and like have them because I might want to play this in paper at some point. <laughs> yeah, and it's even made appearances in older formats. Like there's a modern spirits deck for a while, and Rattle Chains is a big part of that. Like without Rattle Chains, the deck probably just can't compete. Mm-hmm. Yeah. All right, cool. So, Rakdos Anvil, blue, Mono Blue uh, Tempo, <laughs> pretty much the same, pretty much the same deck. Uh, <laughs> I do actually like that matchup. It's kind of fun to play, and I think I'm probably... I've found I'm a little ahead just because all of my cards are so cheap that mm-hmm. it kind of invalidates the counter magic a little bit. I would agree. Um, because And then um, I have, like, devil tokens to just ping stuff all the time. It's mm-hmm. great. <laughs> yeah, so that's rough. Um <clears throat> I actually haven't ran into that much uh, Rakdos, and that's the deck I was expecting to see the most. Um, mainly a bigger version with like Fable and like Sorin and um, Chandra and, and things. And I think I've played against it once, and it was horrible. It wasn't actually no that matchup wasn't so bad because there are a lot of things I can counter. Because um, if you mm-hmm. don't know the Mono Blue deck, it's just like Flash creatures, and you're just countering everything. I think I have I basically sideboard a, like four to eight counters <laughs> a lot of times <laughs> it's like okay take out this creature i don't like bring in every counter spell i have all right here we go <laughs> oh for sure i mean <clears throat> when you're like tap tap out for chandra torch of defiance they're like okay spell pierce spell pierce like, that's crushing <laughs> <laughs> spell pierce play two creatures attack your other planeswalker um yeah Not exactly it's uh it's nice but um anyway i was just expecting to see a lot more of that um yeah so let's talk about this deck i mean I think right now this is sort of considered the best deck in the format. Like maybe the this is the big bad wolf at the moment. Mm-hmm. I don't think it's gonna stay that way for very long, just because one of the things about this deck is it's like it's a mid range deck and all of the cards are very good. 
mm-hmm. um, and you can you have Thoughtseize to like rely on. Um, but as other decks start to get a bit more streamlined and their their game plan gets figured out, they get a little faster. They get a little like harder to interact with. These types of decks usually have a hard time staying at the top. I think this deck is just going to be good, like still tier one because the cards are just so good mm-hmm. in it. Like you know, it's one. It's the best Fable of the Mirror Breaker deck. So it's obviously gonna That'd be good. <laughs> just right. It's just gonna be good because it uses that card the best, and that's one of the best cards. Um, but yeah, I think I think right now, especially with a wide open meta game, you want like something like this is also gonna do really well because um, it can it, it can deal with anything. Mm-hmm. Right. It doesn't really matter what you're up to. Thoughtseize can help me stop you. Whereas some other decks are just like cold to certain combo strategies, or completely cold to like you know, they can't beat a collected company or something. You know, mm-hmm. this this just has answers for everything if it needs them. Like it has graveyard hate, it has thoughtseize, it has just powerful cards that don't run away with the game if you're not interacting, and it has plenty of removal, obviously. So yeah, <clears throat> this is like a really good first couple of weeks kind of deck when people are still figuring things out. Absolutely, yeah. Oh, I um, definitely thought I had this this matchup in the bag, and then they ended up um, having to. I don't remember. Oh no, they top decked Kroxa, and then it just like went downhill from there. I was like, oh shit, yeah. <laughs> that's a card I can't beat. If I that, that's what playing against this deck is like. You mm-hmm. know, you both just discard and like have nothing in hand, and then it feels like they're top decking. And you're like, you're so lucky, and then it's like, wait, every single card in your deck is so good, though. So yeah, it's like, like... Uh, it, basically, if you don't draw a land, I'm gonna think you got a lucky top deck. Exactly, because <laughs> they're all great. I'm like hoping you draw, I guess, like Blood Tithe Harvester or something. It's like that. That's your worst draw, which is a pretty good place to. Or be. like honestly, at the end of the game, you're just like a thought seize, please. Dr- like true, draw yeah, thought seize. Game thought seize. <laughs> it's, it's pretty bad. That's what I draw. Them. That's what mm-hmm. I draw. Them. <laughs> Always. No, you don't. 12, baby. You mulligan until you have a thought season in your opening hand. I thought that's how everyone played that card. Is that <laughs> not right? Oh, I've been doing it wrong. I mulligan and then get thought seized and then can't possibly win. That's what <laughs> I usually do. <laughs> so many times I'm looking at my hand, I'm just like, well, if they have, if it's a thought seized deck, I'm going to lose. If they turn one thought seized, I can't win. But I'm not going to like four. So. That's what we're going to do. Yeah. And then it's like, Swamp Thoughts. So like, every fucking every, time. Yeah. yeah. Um, my, uh, my bad mulligan decision is always like my seven, but I only have one land, but a Spectral Sailor and a Curious Obsession. So I'm like, mm, maybe draw maybe. some more land. And then you play the Spectral Sailor and they kill it. And then you're like, well, all right. Yeah. <clears throat> Fatal push. Never mind. <laughs> As the Curious Obsession is on the stack. <laughs> you know, so I lose them both That's and rough. I'm just like screwed. <laughs> but you you dreamed big and I like that. I that's the only way to dream. Um <laughs> But anyway, yeah, this this Rakdos deck is pretty great, and it's one of the ones that you should just obviously be looking at and expecting to see a lot, which I was, and actually didn't run into a lot. Um, But it is the... uh, If you're in any sort of high-stakes situation, be be on the lookout for this deck. Yeah, it it needs to be something that you have have some sort of a game plan for. Mm -hmm. Um, Like, you need to either decide whether you're planning on going under this deck or over it, Mm -hmm. sort of, because if... If you're in the middle, that could be fun too. And maybe you know, if you want to play a mid-range deck, that's cool. But just know that if you, this is probably the best one, at least at the moment. So. Yeah. So then just play this one and uh, get yeah. good at the mirror. <laughs> that's right. <laughs> just just load your sideboard with like some of those cards that are just color haters. <laughs> <laughs> For your own colors. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> Do they make those still? Like, this black card... There are a few kicking around on Arena. Better at, at, at killing black things. Um, but uh, anyway, uh, yeah, one deck that I did see a lot of that I wasn't really thinking was going to be huge and ended up being a really great matchup for me was um, Azorius Control. Uh-huh. I was running into this deck all the time. I think I played two of the T events, and I probably played four matches against blue or blue eye control um i barely play against it i think i played against it once and i just annihilated it because blue eye control has a pretty bad like cat oven type deck matchup 
if you're always sitting there hoping, it's like, oh, I hope you're a Teferi deck, because <laughs> none of your removal does anything. Mm-hmm. <laughs> and, like, counter spells don't care. Um, so I, but I've only played it, like, once, I think. So I didn't even realize it was, like, a legitimate part of the metagame. I, I didn't... That's just a person who likes blue-white control. I didn't think it was either, but I just ran into it so many times that I was like, I guess this must be something, but... Um, maybe it's just anyone... It, it's like, like historic, right? It's just always a part of the metagame, even if it sucks, because people, people like just want to play blue-white to fairy. Yeah. They just want to play that. I don't think it's very good, but um, it's there. <laughs> it's around... Did you say it's like tier two or, or even worse? Uh, I think it's probably just tier two. Um, it's just a really good matchup against uh, for me for the mono blue deck. Yeah, that makes sense. Because I, I can play on the Early same level. Early pressure and like counter magic to disrupt is traditionally very, very good against dirtily controlled decks. Yeah, it's, it's just... Uh, it just always feels good <laughs> to, when, yeah. when you see that like, tapped irrigated... I think irrigated, we're both sitting there like, come on, yeah. <laughs> come on, blue-white. Irrigated farmland on turn one? Yes. <laughs> this is going yeah. <laughs> to be a good matchup. Um, but no, I wouldn't recommend playing that deck. I, I don't think it's going to be very good. Though, um, have you seen a lot of Is It Phoenix? So that was the deck that I was sort of expecting as just the default, this is going to be what everyone's playing Yeah. Um, kind of thing. And I haven't seen that much of it, personally. I wonder if it's partially because the red-black mid-range deck must have a good matchup against it. Like, it, it just has so much incidental graveyard hate. Yeah, and like it's like literally... And, and just so much removal, right? So... yeah. I just don't know. Maybe that's a bad matchup, and it's suppressing Is It Phoenix a bit. I feel like Is It Phoenix still has to be a good deck in this format, though. It's just like has all the same cards that make it good in other formats. Exactly. Um, but man, like Graveyard Trespasser, that card's so annoying. So good. Even if yeah. you're not even playing graveyard stuff, <clears throat> just because you can't kill it without getting a bunch of cards out of your hand. <laughs> Like, yeah, <laughs> I guess maybe in the the is it Phoenix matchup you discard your Phoenixes to that uh, ward trigger, but like Phoenix hates decks that have incidental graveyard hate. Mm-hmm. They want you to have to like side shit in to address what is kind of their secondary game plan. But then when you just already have it, if you're just like you're already playing unlicensed hearse and like hen- the hive of the eye tyrant, you know, yeah, eye tyrant, and then you know, Graveyard Trespasser. It's just like, all right, well, I guess I'll play the three drop I was going to play anyways and exile your Phoenix and, like, drain you for one. Mm-hmm. It's like, man, that's that sucks for the Phoenix player. Now they're just slowly playing out, like, kind of dorky blue and red creatures yeah. that all died a fatal push. <laughs> it's just like... And can't uh, block this 3-3 three, three, or 4-4 four, four that's attacking them. Yeah. That's also right. getting rid of all the other cards in the graveyard. Uh, that card's just good. Yeah. Yeah, innocuous. Like when we read it, I was like, "Graveyard Trespasses." This card seems good, but I didn't realize it would just be like a part of my life for the foreseeable future. I know like, everyone's playing this card. It is funny that like the best werewolf cards are black and white. <laughs> yeah, <laughs> it's like Graveyard Trespasser uh, and Brutal Cathar. It's like those are the best ones. Um, all the old Midnight Hunt. Don't ever change. Don't you? Don't you ever change? <laughs> And maybe this is just me, but what I've been seeing, and, like, a lot of this, is basically Luca Transmogrify variants. Really? That's just, like, all I run into, um, and of all sorts. I, you know, there's Teamer, um, sometimes with, like, Yorion and stuff. Fires of Invention, that whole, you know, old deck. Jeskai version of the same thing. Game plan... For those who don't know, the game plan is to like may, play no creatures in your deck, you make tokens, and then when you play Luca or Transmogrify, you hit that token and you get an, uh, you get whatever creature is the only creature in your deck. Uh, I'm seeing people move towards um, Titan of Industry. That's what they're playing, so it's like a turn four Titan of Industry. Huh? Um, I, most of the time when they go, boom, Titan of Industry, I'm like, so glad that wasn't an agent of treachery. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I don't know why you're playing that instead of agent of treachery, but I don't know, people seem to have decided. People seem to be split on which way to go. Um, but yeah, like I've seen, I've even seen a Jund one, and it plays Obnixilis, and it makes like the devil tokens and hits that. And 
I thought it was just worse than other options because we've talked about this a lot, but Ob is not good in decks that don't pressure you. Um, and so he's really just like a three mana make a devil token, just doesn't feel Very worth good. going into black for. But uh, I liked it because I, you know, I was like, hey, you trying something else, and that's cool. Um, but I've been playing against so much of this deck, and it's, it brings me back to when you used to, when this was the best deck in the format, and you always had to like, always hold removal up because they could just Luka and you have to be able to kill the thing in response which by the way for those at home is how you play against this deck if they tap out for transmogrify or Luka it targets and you just kill that thing and it'll fizzle the the trigger the trigger yeah that sounds like a deck that but you it, like you were a, you were playing transmogrify token decks for a oh, while last one. year yeah well, I built after playing against it a bunch I was like now this is where I want to be and I started mm -hmm. building my own my own versions um, but yeah it's like the versions I like tend to be I built a Naya one that's just a tokens deck and just has transmogrify as like a oops I win button mm -hmm. but is mostly like just playing tokens a token strategy um, and I'm working on that right now, and that's been a lot of fun. What's um, the What's the creature in the deck? Well, it is Titan of Industry. <laughs> I'm, ashamed, I'm ashamed to say because I don't play blue, man. It's Naya. <laughs> I don't have that. I don't can't use Agent of Treasure. Uh, <laughs> I mean, it can. You just hope you never draw it. Um, no, 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 no. I'm not about that. <laughs> I love decks yeah. where you're not supposed to <laughs> draw the card that wins you the game. Um, but I am trying to like explore other options because I've gotten a shocking amount of turn four Titan of Industries and just didn't win that game. It's like, well, this clearly isn't good enough. <laughs> the whole point is to have an I win button and it, it's just a like, I'm ahead button. Yeah. And that's not great. That's not good. Yeah, I'm so surprised that you even like tried it because you just, yeah. I know you don't like that card. That's so funny. Um, okay, but there, when I was criticizing that card, like I'm talking as a ramp target mostly. Sure. Like, cheating okay. it out is always a different story. Like Gristlebrand is a bad card, but when you're talking about cheating it out, you're obviously going to choose to use Gristlebrand. I, I guess I thought we were talking about reanimating, but like, anyway. It, uh, reanimating, yeah, but I was probably thinking standard where you're reanimated on like turn six. So that's true. Like slower than ramp. All right. Okay. I'll give you that. I'll give you that. Just in my mind, I was pegging you for the Titan of Industry is like no, horrible. I knew, I knew I was gonna take flat for it as soon as I was putting it in my deck. I was like, oh, yeah. but I, I might switch back to the Archon. You know, the Archon that makes everything a three-three. I mean, I like those that in token decks. I think that was great, and that's also one that people aren't expecting to. Um, so that's a that's a fun one. Uh, that's cool. I haven't seen anything like that. I feel like I've just seen the same kind of stuff over and over again. Really? I feel like it would be a, such a solid matchup for you. Oh, for sure. Yeah, a bunch of ground creatures that... Uh, <laughs> and they try to do anything big, and I always hold mana up. I think the biggest like change to the deck since we probably, like people would have seen it last is there's a card in Kamigawa that channels to make a basically a 1-1 one -one that taps for green token. Mm -hmm. And that's huge because it's like an instant speed mana accelerating token so you get to play like a mana dork without having to put a creature in your deck so you, you can't play mana dorks usually in these strategies because mm -hmm. they're creatures yeah um, but these decks and that's why they're mostly teamer now uh they have access to two because they also have the um the citizen's briefcase or whatever oh that's essentially yeah it's like a to one one token and a treasure and a treasure basically for two I like so now they they can do it on turn three a lot more consistently than they used to be able to. That's pretty cool. That would, ugh, that sounds horrible. I, I will keep my eye out for that thing. Um, so I have been seeing this like I think it's white black or um, I think it's mainly white black or maybe there's something else. I'm not sure, but um, they're playing demonic pact, which is the the enchantment that like has a bunch of stuff that is good for you, but then the last thing is you lose the game and you can only pick each one once. And triggers on your upkeep. Now I didn't play the game long enough to see how they were going to try to give it to me because I'm. That's usually what you want to do in that deck is you take all the good yeah. ones and then you either blow it up or you you give it to your opponent so then they die. Um, but instead, I just used uh, the um, the fairy rogue to bounce it back to their hand over and over again. Whatever that. <laughs> <laughs> the beer is getting to me. I can't remember card names right now. <laughs> How brazen of you. Bra yes, brazen borrower. Uh, <laughs> uh, 
Oh, gosh. We have another beer that's going to be this much? Jeez. It's going to be so rough. Uh, anyway, um, so I have seen like some, some little wacky decks like that that are, that are really cheeky, but um, I, I'm going to look out for those tokens. Definitely. I think the Luka decks are on the rise, and this is one of the decks that I think is legitimate, and when they figure out what the best way to build it is, like should we be playing Agent, should we be playing Titan, should we be playing something else... Um, is it Teamer? Is it Jeskai? I think it has to be Teamer because of the eight uh, mana dorks you get mm-hmm. out of green. But who knows? Maybe it's four color. Once they figure that out, I think, and in particular solidify the like Rakdos mid-range matchup, because, again, they are slightly vulnerable to removal, which Rakdos has so much of. Mm-hmm. Um, once they figure that out, I think it'll be sort of a tier one mainstay. Um and so I think that's probably where I'd imagine Tier 1 kind of leveling out is I, I imagine Rakdos will still be there. Is it Phoenix? Probably is, is kicking around there, mm-hmm. even though it's not as good as you know we thought it would be. It's still probably very, very... It's still, like, so powerful. Can always win. And then one of these, one of these like, Transmogrify decks be in the mix, too. And then, uh, I don't know, maybe... There, I haven't seen anything else that makes a really convincing case for me that it's going to be Tier 1. I've been impressed with, with Spirits, but I've only played it a few times. Um, there's got to be some sort of like creature deck, though, that finds its way in, like in a collected company format. Exactly. You know, whether, whether it's a Coco deck or Spirits or something, I don't know. I was assuming so. So, um, I think Spirits is close, but I don't think it's Tier 1. And, uh, yeah, some sort of, like, I've seen some, like, white-green angel decks that are, like, collected company decks. Um, or, uh, you know, there, there's going to be something. I don't know the best way to build it, but um, mm-hmm. uh, some of those have been, like, you know, it, it kind of looks like mono-white with, like, Thalia and Redain and um, Adeline, but you just use collected company to get everything out, and it's just, it's brutal, Cathar. Um it's good. <laughs> yeah, there are so many <laughs> decks that, like, even the decks that quote unquote aren't real, they can still thrash you. Like, if you have a slow start against almost any deck, it feels like you could be dead by turn four. That's just something that, that almost all of them can do. Yeah. Which I like. I like formats that are, you know, hitting your early land drop. Like, a mana stumble at the beginning makes you lose. Like, that's, that's, those are the decks I like playing. Um, mm-hmm. And I often am the one who thinks that they can. Uh, I don't. I only need two lands, um, and then I get screwed. <laughs> uh, but you know, that's uh, that's. I, I like formats like that. So this it's been a lot of fun, and uh, yeah. All right, I'm uh, pretty much done my beer here, so that seems like a nice place to stop. Yeah. Coming up, we'll be exploring the format even more. So don't go anywhere. This beer break is brought to you by our patrons over on Patreon. That's right. You're already supporting the show just by listening. But if you want to support the show even more, the Patreon is the best way to do that. And when you become a patron, you get an exclusive invite to our after party, which is a mini episode recorded immediately after this one where we, uh, you know, talk about some other stuff. Plus, you get to vote on your favorite co-host by clicking the Buy Jeff a Beer button. It should be there, big shiny letters. There shouldn't really be anything else worth clicking on, but uh, just click right on that and you, yeah, you get to buy me a beer. Sure, 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 sure. Uh, so go to patreon.com slash arena regulars to vote on your favorite host. Which should actually be Zach. All right. It's going to be tough to top my 10.3% beer, Zach, but what did you bring? Um, uh, you know, a beer. Uh, so this is the Origin of Darkness that Collective Arts has done with Equilibrium Brewing Company. And it is an Imperial Stout double barrel aged in bourbon and tawny port barrels with cherries, vanilla, and cacao nibs. And this one is... 11.8 percent jeez oh my god god what have we done to ourselves you really should go to the patreon because this after party is gonna get weird <laughs> <laughs> oh boy yeah, i mean i love me a good imperial stout okay I usually do like two back to back like this in like usually a don't time period yeah usually i do like uh I do one, and then I go to bed immediately afterwards. <laughs> <laughs> Halfway through kind of thing. 
All right, let's keep talking about uh, Explorer, if we can remember what this format is. Jeez. Yeah, so my pitch for Explorer is there's the, like, good stuff, right? We all know there's a few decks that are good, and we talked about those before the break with some inflection of, or injection of spice uh, into the mix. But the other awesome part of Explorer is you can play wacky, cool decks and actually have a expectation that you'll do fairly well. Like, I'm not talking like you can just do whatever you want and expect to win. But if you're a mono red player, you could build a really strong mono red deck in Explorer, mm-hmm. and you could you could win games. If you are just oh, I love Golgari mid range, you know. A kind of nerd like school Gary Midrange. But if you're one of those people, you know, you could build that deck and you could have an ex like, you know, you know you're giving up some equity because you're not playing the best decks in the format that, you know, very good players have built for you. But you can actually expect to do reasonably well and get like rewarded for building your deck well and, and building it over time. And I think that's really cool for a format to have. Um, that you don't feel like you you just have to play red black or or die. Yeah, that is absolutely the case. And um, even like so, mono red. I was playing against mono red today uh, with my mono blue oh, s- oh yeah. spirits. Thought th- thought I made that up, but all right, this person no, it's mono real. Red and, and yeah, yeah. built a mono red deck. So I was playing against mono red, and I was like, okay, this probably isn't the best for me because all their spells are really cheap and they're going to burn my face. Um, But I ended up stealing game one by doing some nefarious things, mainly just bouncing their Chandra over and over again. Um, Mm -hmm. But uh, game three, which was like the decider, um, of course, I like, you know, end step, play two Brazen Borrowers. They're sitting on the battlefield. I'm like, sweet. Like, I'm going to get them low enough that like they're they're probably going to die soon. And then they just like Goblin Chain Whirler me. And I'm like, what the fuck? Forgot about that card. I was card. like, I forgot that this was a card. <laughs> and I was like, geez, you cited that in. Of course you did, because it kills like most of my deck. <laughs> I was like, oh, that's the worst. That was the worst card to see at that time. <laughs> but you know um, what? You won't make that mistake again. I won't. I really won't. Mate, I won't play too. I feel like you know you need to get chain whirlered once every year or two, just to just to remind you. you just know, to remember like, him. Wow, that was the best in that cycle for sure. Uh, actually, no, that's not true. But some people look back on that and be like, I can't believe this was like the best card in Standard. How crappy was Standard? It's like, you haven't been chain whirlered, and it shows. You, like, it, <laughs> it is real rough. Either like before or after combat, ugh. You know, it's like so annoying. Oh, yeah, exactly. Like every single combat is just like, what if they have chain whirler? You like always have to have that in your mind. Yeah. And then... Think about if your planeswalkers always had one less loyalty. It'd be so hard to keep them alive. Like, just, it all adds up. Mm -hmm. Not to mention a 3-3 first striker is already a totally reasonable body. Um, Yeah. And and I get it, because when that card was spoiled, I was like, oh, that seems pretty good. And then, but did I think that's the best card in standard? Like, no, obviously not. Yeah. Anyway, um, that's annoying. Um, And of (laughs) course, like, they have uh, Bonecrusher Giant again, so that's great. That one was obviously going to be the best card in Standard. Once they banned all the dozen <laughs> cards better than it. <laughs> yeah, but um, anyway, yeah. If you like playing Mono Red, go right ahead. There, you know, Ramen Up Ruins is still a card you can play. Um, oh, it's yeah. uh, good stuff. And it actually works out. You know, Historic Mono Red isn't very good. Um, I guess you can, like, Hazaret people. You can, yeah. You can go way old school here. You can go way old. You can Glory Bringer them if you want. <laughs> <laughs> Probably I'm sure not someone. I'm sure enough. someone out there is glory bringing. <laughs> glory bringing people. Oh man! But yeah, that's what I thought we could talk about in this section. It's just like fun decks we've played against, and like stuff that we might want to try or maybe seen somewhere. And I'll start because I have this awesome one that I played against, um, and it was a four color. It was essentially a landfall deck, so it was okay. a math deck. But here's the the catch. It was using. It was basically all basics and the new lands from Capen- New Capenna that uh, when they sacrifice, uh, they, they come into play, oh. immediately sack, and they mm-hmm. get another land. So it's a double landfall trigger. So it's kind of like bad Fabled Passage in a landfall deck. But the way this person was making use of it was playing um, Sudden Reclamation. Is that, that might be, I think that's the name of the card. 
It returns all lands from your graveyard to the battlefield. Yes. And it's four mana. And I got obliterated by a few... I think there was, like, a mammoth or something, and it had, like, a, a bajillion power because <laughs> it brought back, like, seven of these lands, and then they all immediately sack and go get more lands. So it's basically, like... It's just an insane number of landfall triggers. And if you oh, have right. Omnath out... Yeah. Right, so they're actually better than Fabled Passage in that situation because you normally can't sack the Fabled Passage right away, but these force you to sack Yeah, because right they come to the battlefield tapped, and this right. will, will sack them no matter... That's so cool. It was very cool. The other two games I easily won, but the game where they did their thing, I got... Tr like I, got, I was just like smiling while I get annihilated by opponents at like 58... As like, <laughs> I'm dead by a solid 30, 35 points. And <laughs> just like, had, they have so much mana because they had like an Omnath and a Lotus Cobra or something. Just like, I don't know even what, what you're going to do with all that mana. But <laughs> just, <laughs> I'm like, I'm dead to the mammoth, but she, show me, man, play some stuff. Dang. <laughs> That's awesome. I think I might have seen some, Fire Shoes was running around with a list uh, that was a landfall or something, but I, I must not have looked deep enough to see how, uh, how cool that interaction is. I like that. You know, how yeah. how cool is it that you can play, oh, you know, these lands that are seen as, like, the third best in, like, draft um, mm -hmm. that we'll never see play in standard or anything. Um, it's actually better to have this card than the other ones. That's awesome. Right. <laughs> yeah. yeah, that's what I really appreciated about it. Mm -hmm. I was like, I, wanna, I just want to see your whole deck list because mm -hmm. I only got to see a small portion of it. Um, it also reminded me that regular Omnath is legal in this format. And right. Like, oh, yeah. We can't just play Omnath. Oh, yeah, I guess you can. I forgot about that. It's just, uh, it's just, it's still four mana. That's awesome. And so I went to build that deck immediately, and then Sudden Reclamation is a rare, and I was like, nah. It's not, <laughs> it's not worth my wild cards for, for Sudden Reclamation, unfortunately. <laughs> That's the kind of thing where I would probably just do it. I'd be like, you know what? Yes. Yeah. <laughs> if I weren't tight on, on rare wild cards, I would. But... Because I am tight, because I make decisions like that, I, I couldn't do the, I couldn't in, in good conscience. It makes make sense. I understand that, that you know. <laughs> I get it. I get it. Um, I have been really impressed with. Uh, this is just a card that not only in Explorer but like other. I've seen this deck in Standard, like a variation of it, um, but like this fight rigging deck. Like so, mm -hmm. fight fight rigging is like the three mana green uh, enchantment that has hideaway from Nukapena. And it just, uh, at the beginning of your uh, combat step, it puts a plus one, plus one counter on something. But the it just, it feels like a green Luminarch Aspirant a lot of the time. And you're like, this is super annoying. And then, like, the deck is always right. just playing a bunch of, like, six power creatures so that you can get to I, seven. I guess an Explorer, you get Rotting Regisaur, right? Yeah. You, so you, you get the freebie. You get Rotting Regisaur, which is the freebie that, uh, because it has Hideaway, you are trying to... Uh, the card you can play off of Hideaway, you have to have a creature with power seven or greater. And so Riding Magisaur is like, here we go. But everything else, like, three you know. Three mana, seven power creature. Yeah, they're all, like, uh, three mana, six power creatures or, like, all this stuff. It's just... Oh, the, it, the fact that I get to play Reggie just made me want to go build black, red, like, aggro and just sack Reggie to Opixilis. See? That's all I want to do. That sounds amazing. Do that. Maybe make a jund for fight rigging. I don't know. Just to add fight rigging? Since we're already going to play a whole bunch. But everything's a three jund. That's the thing about this deck I've always noticed. is like all the high tough or high power cheap creatures are all three drops. And fight rigging is like... <laughs> Obnixilis is the three drop. And like... Um, it's just like this... What do I do if... Before this? <laughs> like, you yeah. Know I mean? Well, it's also... Fight rigging is a three drop. It's, it's just all three drops. It's just a bunch of three drops. I guess drops. you need Land War Elves. Yeah, but I do like, because um, they're playing Obosh the Prey Piercer as, like, the companion. Oh, I like that. That makes sense. That seems nice, um, because, okay, does does Obnixilus deal damage, or does he make you lose life? He makes you lose life. Damn it. Okay, so it doesn't combo with Obosh. Anyway, um, that would have been sweet. Just, <laughs> just play your <laughs> Obnixilus with your Obosh. Anyway. Um, hey, can, it's a real difference if, if you're like, do I discard a card or take four? Oh my god, I'd probably discard a card at that point. <laughs> yeah, that's so much. Uh, but anyway, I just like that, uh, you know, looking at the cycle of these hideaway enchantments, I, I was thinking 
very little for right. most of them. Um, maybe the white one is my favorite, but uh, I think I don't they're know. all better than I thought they were. Actually, I thought they were the hot trash, hot garbage, and hot like, trash. playing against them like they're actually they're actually pretty good. Yeah, good. Um, I've just liked to seeing these uh, these fight reading decks. They're so interesting when you see like that shakedown heavy come <laughs> and you're like okay this is a fight rigging deck <laughs> otherwise you would not be playing this card <laughs> i i've just pulled up uh, an explorer list uh, like i like this great henge forgot about that motherfucker mm. yeah that makes a lot of sense with high power creatures yeah That's what you want uh verderous gear hulk forgot about you as well elder gargaroth makes sense makes sense okay i can get behind this deck <laughs> yeah also because all these cards are like the other ones that you're saying great henge are huge so they're also cards that you know you would like to play off of fight rigging with the hideaway right yeah although i guess i guess by definition if you're playing great henge off of the fight rigging the great henge was a two drop the I, that's true <laughs> But it still seems exciting. Find timber, uh, turn timber symbiosis. There we go. Yeah, that's there we a go. <laughs> that's I've been a... running four of that. The list I pay, pulled up just has two, but that just seems like auto include four of. Well, you just want to add more lands to every deck, so of course you would. That's true. <laughs> <laughs> I legitimately think that is how um, my anvil list started. I just downloaded something, cut the worst card, added the land, and then started to make changes. Yeah, that's what you should that's really just what do. I do. That's what I do. Go back, take the Rakdos mid mid range deck, cut the the card that seems the worst, the worst, <laughs> yeah, the worst, <laughs> and uh, add a land. There you go. Boom. I don't know. Some people try to just push their land counts these days. You know, you see like 23, 24 lands, and I'm like, that was that was acceptable like five years ago. Okay, it's no longer acceptable to play twenty three or twenty four lands unless you're really low to the ground. Like we're talking. One drops and two drops and barely any three drops. And the reason is that there are so many utility lands now. Mm -hmm. There are so many lands that are essentially spells that why play a spell that's a spell when you could play a land that's a spell? I'm like looking around being like, I'm playing 23 lands in the, the bottom blue deck. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but that's like you, you have probably Brazen Borrower tops your curve. Right? Yes. Yeah. But it's still like... But I see people with five drops and 24 lands, you know? Cause, and I think it's because Arena recommends 24, which is part, that of makes the, sense. part of the problem. But it's just like, man, you, I, I have no sympathy for you when you get mana screwed if you're running 24 lands and you're, oh man, if only I could have played my Lolf. It's like, well, you should have put a few more lands in your deck. This is the thing, like, you... This, it's an important lesson to learn that, like, yes... Games of Magic, you will get mana screwed or flooded or whatever. But if you are consistently looking for lands and it's just not happening, or just in general, if there's if there seems to be something going wrong, it's probably because you didn't build your deck right. And that's just right. that's a thing. Just be okay with that. <laughs> just yeah. take a breath, be like, alright, maybe I need to add more lands. Maybe this card isn't as good. And just do that. <laughs> It just seems like, I don't know, sometimes people complain about the mulligans or like, oh, we need different mulligan rules because I don't have enough lands or something. Blah, blah, blah. It's like, no, you just need more. <laughs> and they're giving you so many tools now. There's so many great tools, like you were just saying, that they're like, hey, this is land that's also a spell if you need it to be something else. So If you're, if you're in a red aggressive deck, just play Shadow Spell Smash. That's essentially a spell, and it's going to be a land when you need it. Yeah. And Those are so valuable. And usually you don't care if you, you know, bolt yourself, so go for it. Yeah, my, my anvil list tops out at three, and I think it has, like, currently I'm playing eight three drops, I think, but I play 25 lands in that, and even then I'm like, this is a bit, this is a bit suspect. I think yeah. I could push it to 26. So, but how much, how much are you counting Shatter Skull on that? Is that counting, a, is that, like, a, a land? Yeah, yeah, or counting Shatter Skull as a land, yeah. Okay, as a full land, not, like, half a land. Yeah, yeah, just as a land. Okay. Yeah. Because I am allowed to play it as a land if I need to. That's true. And it comes into play on tap, so it's not even one of the ones where. Uh, it's not like Jawar disruption. You know, it's like yeah. as, uh, you know, like the the, you know, I love Kazandu Mammoth. Played a lot of Kazandu Mammoth, mm -hmm. but the backside kind of stinks. It's a tapped forest. Like, yeah. You, you really, really want to play that card in the front side, whereas I would say Chattersoul Smashing I is most often the land, mm -hmm. and then just sometimes comes in to save the day where it just blows up two huge creatures. Yeah. Or, or like a planeswalker. Um, yeah. Yes. 
All right. Anyway, that is just to continue. Just to remember, hey, lands are okay. Th this is a random thing. Uh, has anyone played cribbage? Sorry, I'm not talking to everybody. <laughs> Jeff, have you played cribbage before? Do you know? No, cribbage? I have not. All right. Well, I have heard of it. Basically, it's uh, it's just the game you play with like a deck of cards and the crib board, which is just a bunch of holes. It's like 120 holes. You have little pegs. But the point of the game is that you're trying to uh, make groups of 15s or runs or different things like that. Um, and the first half of the game, you like deal the cards out. And the first part of the round is you play cards back and forth and you get points if you get pairs or like 15s or things playing off of the other person's cards. And then after that, you count your hand. But it's important to remember that that game has two parts to it. The pegging part is the one that people like forget counts for points right and they only think about building their hand to be the best hand <coughs> they could possibly have to make points in the second half of the game and it's mm -hmm. the same thing with magic hey lands are super important like you can't play the game without lands like them and play them and focus on them they are they're you want to play one a turn because you can right and even to your earlier point you know like people might forget that a lot of winning the game happens in deck building and not in actually playing the game. Yeah, and vice versa. So, um, sure, yeah. both of those things. That's why I always like net decking because I know that my deck building skills aren't the best, but I want to focus on... I want to get better at that. So if I look at other people's lists, it can help me build a better one of my own. And... I need to be better at playing the game, so if I don't have to worry about if my deck is good or not, or if I need to change cards, I just take somebody else's, and then just say, oh, I actually think that I screwed up that sequencing, because I think the deck's pretty good. I just screwed up. Um, yeah, for sure. It's nice to have, like... That decking is dope. It's, it's nice to have, like, a base... You can cut out as many... Cut out as many variables as possible so that you can start to figure out what you need to work on. Right. In this day and age, there should be no shame in like using someone else's thing as a starting point. That's done in every industry, in everything around the world. That's yeah. what everyone does because that just makes sense. You, know, you ever heard the expression, you don't have to reinvent the wheel? Yeah. But there's a reason that people say that is because it's true. You don't have to start from the ground up and do everything yourself every time. <laughs> Imagine like General Motors is like, all right, so we made a new wheel. <laughs> for yeah, this yeah. car <laughs> it's not as good obviously obviously it's not as good but, but we made it we made it um, and all those other car companies are jerks yeah for exactly. using someone else's wheel design yeah. all you have to do is spend this two-year course learning how to use the new wheel but it's worth <laughs> it in the end because it works almost just as good as the other one <laughs> anyway jeff is there another deck you want to talk about for for explorer yeah yeah so i do you know to bring us all the way back that fight rigging deck looks sweet i'm mm -hmm. glad you brought it up um i played against someone and oh i love this person i mean again his stories are always like this but i i won fairly easily because i was playing uh, like a good deck but my opponent was playing Dem Demir Rogues, and I loved them for it. I was so, I was like, yes, you're, you're warming my heart right now. I want to, like, concede to give you the win. But, you know, that was to go, like, 4-0, and so I instead did not do that. But uh, I really appreciate that there's still some Rogues aficionados out there really trying to make it work in Explorer, of all things. Uh, I get that you have thought sees, but like the rest of the deck is a standard deck. So yeah, but I love it. I love it. You know, if they can get rid of like the Merfolk Wind Robber and do something else, it is. <laughs> yeah. I even hate, thought that card was too weak in the standard deck. Yeah, so. it's so <laughs> the bad. That people are playing, and, and the problem is you just cannot get away with Ruin Crab mm -hmm. in Explorer. It's just not good enough. And you could get away with it would like you could get away with it in standard and it helped you make some explosive draws, right? But when you don't have ruin crab, you're just too slow, basically. Like you're all your spells come online too late. Yeah. And it's yeah, I think it's also hard with one of the best decks is playing either one of them is either playing like Phoenix or it's playing Kroxa. And you're like, okay, well, 
<laughs> True, yeah. Which and that and there's like graveyard hate and stuff too. They can exile their own, own stuff out of their graveyard to drain you and like and like yeah, get you off of your <clears throat> your rogue delirium or whatever. So there's unlicensed hearse too, which mm-hmm. is all, always a nightmare for any deck that cares about the graveyard in any way. So you might need a good sideboard plan. Um, I would be very interested in the deck that uh, is rogues that morphs into something else in the sideboard. That would... Uh, mm-hmm. Something completely different. Like, just take out all the rogues and change. <laughs> <laughs> now I'm spirits. Yeah. Oh, <laughs> Drown in the Lock does almost nothing. <laughs> yeah. uh, but I loved it, and then... Um, it's just it. It's not the right metagame for it. They'll have to inject some more rogue, some more reason to play rogues for this yeah. to be a real thing. But I I respect people that are like I just like this deck. I want to play it. I want to try and make it work in the new format. And so that's what I was going to ask you. Are there any like cards or decks that maybe you haven't even seen, but like you are surprised you haven't seen or want to see? Um, um, explore. Rogues was the number one that I was most interested in trying to do or figuring out how to make it work. Um, yeah, for for the new new listeners here, we're huge Rogues fans. We are very... So if you can't tell. Yeah, we're very <laughs> pro-Rogue. Though, to be fair, looking at every deck, are we really anti any deck? What's the, the deck we hate the most? Well, yes, I, I was actually going to bring this up, so okay. look, I'm glad you brought it up now. But I haven't... I was worried a little bit. I was a little bit worried in playing this format that I would run into blue red all runs epiphany bullshit. Okay. And I have I'm happy to say I've run into zero all runs epiphany decks. And okay. That makes me happy. That is a deck that we hate. All right. Uh combo control. <laughs> blue blue red combo control tends to be our, our least favorite. Um but um no I like Or just Simic anything. Simic Simic. Yeah. The when <laughs> when those cards were legal, when like you could play freaking uro and shit and it's just the worst i know people are like why do you hate simic and it's like because when i was playing the most there was years years where simic just got the best card every single set and it was so just dumb so dumb um also i'm like a, a just a non-simic player playing commander and it it's just <laughs> all the things that are good in commander or blue green things anyway nothing and drawing cards yeah uh, anyway <laughs> So, um, yeah, I haven't really tried putting together or playing, like, a um, Orzhov Auras deck, which I know was a thing at one point uh, in Pioneer, but uh, Lurus is banned, and so now it's like a... Ugh, I don't know if it's any good. Um, though I did see a list that looked really fun. It was like a Bant Super Friends deck playing Giada's Gift, or, sorry, um, Luxior, Giada's Gift. Mm-hmm. Um, but it was like Gideon of the Black Blade and um, oh nice so it's like that kind of stuff um, we, I think you still might play um, the Heart of Kirin and then you can play like all the good Wandering Emperor yeah well, you can play Wandering Emperor you get to play Teferi you can play uh, just uh, what is it um, Narset and, and like any of those like Bant Planeswalkers oh, imagine that you... Narset double take down and then equip with uh the weapon when she's on one loyalty and just start whacking face. That's pretty cool. <laughs> I, I just meant like the good Narset helps you find the weapon. It's not you don't play. Why not? <laughs> it's a way to use your one loyalty Narset. Sure, yeah, yeah. I guess yeah. Okay, so are you being serious? You wanna you put your whacking face with the one one? Is that what you're talking about? <laughs> Hey man, it's better than not than not nothing. Them. That's true. I guess you get a chump blocker. <laughs> <laughs> it trades with a cat. Just kidding, it doesn't. Nothing trades with a cat. The cat will no, never. You can never. <laughs> yeah, for me, it's. I always just think about old standard decks or cards that were oppressive or like awesome. And one card that sort of jumped out to me. I haven't actually tried to build with it yet, but. Um, like, I haven't run into Nissa who shakes the world at all. And it's like, I remember this was, like, basically the best card ever. I forgot about that card. Not two years ago Completely. or something. Right? Year, maybe even a year ago. Um, so it's like, obviously, I think it, the power level on that card is, is there for this format. 
just have to decide if there's a shelf for it. Like if that kind of deck is will would be successful. I wonder if we get more mono green devotion stuff. If that will, if that card will be better. I guess right. Maybe... Like mono green devotion was a top deck in Pioneer. I think. Mm-hmm. I think they played a lot. We're just missing some of the cards. Uh, so I think obviously Nykthos yeah is a card that is is missed sorely missed. But uh, like I don't know, maybe some sort of soul ties thing that was like dominating the early days of historic um obviously you can't play uro but you know nissa was really the best card in that in that deck and and there's a few things like that right like you just think back you know could 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 i have to play against ultimatum again sultai ultimatum is that <laughs> probably <laughs> it's, that's it another bring me back to my hatred of all runs epiphany but like you know that Totally could be a thing. Right? That's true. You have growth spiral. You have, you have some good cards. You to do. Make, enable that kind of thing. And you also have time to die by turn four. So that's great. Um, yep, yep. Eat them up. That, that sounds. That's what I want to. I want to run into that deck and nom, 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 just nom on them. That sounds great. <laughs> or, like, how, how would you feel about uh, some pa- Paradox Engine combo? What was, the, um, what was that deck that, like. <laughs> <laughs> that sounds horrible. It was, it was a good and historic for a little while. I feel like that deck's pretty much legal and in, in What was that deck? Now I can't even remember. Uh, it was too complicated. It was a Matt Nass kind of thing, you know? It's like only Matt Nass oh, right. how it that was, deck works. It's like all the... <laughs> yeah, they use Karn to wish for things from the outside of the game, and then you have to get a certain stuff. And, you're, and it was uh, like lurker of the lock what's, what's yeah it? emery you're, you're using emery. emery to get like spell bombs from your graveyard to to loop um to do some stuff yeah those things are way too create that deck is nuts um <laughs> yeah. i will yeah matt nass was the one who beat me with that deck uh in one of the uh yeah. one of the um arena opens and there's no way no, no shame in that no no, no i saw his name and i was like <laughs> okay i'm gonna lose um <laughs> i'm just i'm just excited to see how i'm gonna lose yeah i don't understand how this deck works and he's the master so i will watch him um mm-hmm. too much for me man can't do it those those decks are <laughs> rough Oh boy! You know, like you just have to think back. Like, oh, there's some been some great standard decks that do they port over? So, like, because they all get upgrades. That's the crazy thing. You know, look at them. Like, you remember that card that you were always like, eh? That card just just barely makes the cut, but I just need a one drop, and this is the best one. Mm-hmm. Those cards all get upgrades now. When, when yeah. you think back about those decks, so th- that's what I mean when there's just so many options to build a totally competitive deck. You could just take any deck from the past like ten years of standard, and then try to look for, and you have some fun looking for potential upgrades, and build a, a totally reasonable deck. So you out there, think about your favorite standard decks that were uh, after the last you know five ten years. See if you can build mm-hmm. it in uh, Explorer, because it seems like it's wide open. It's you know it's up up to you. Maybe Jun Sack, you know, if you if you feel like Anvil's not your thing, you could do the more traditional like Corvold one that the people were playing. There's lots of options. So many options. Just play Gruel if you want. Fuck it. Yeah. <laughs> Just play like Innkeeper Gruel Adventures. You know, that's a deck that I I played a lot of back in the day. Yeah, to a lot of success. I remember. <laughs> and then I was like, oh, Rogues is so, so much more fun. It's though. a lot more fun. <laughs> yeah, Embercleave, all that fun stuff. Um, I guess another card, too, is like, I'm just surprised I don't see more Yorion decks because Yorion is just sort of like ubiquitous and it's standard and in modern. And like, yeah, the um, I think some of the either the Azorius control decks or, or there's like a blend between that and Esper. Uh, I've played against a Yorion deck that was doing like the. The old Yorion shit with like the um, uh, treacherous. Uh, what's that enchantment? The two and a black, and you you draw three cards, but when you play a spell, you lose life. Oh yeah, treacherous blessing, like yeah, a doom some, foretold style. Yeah, deck. yeah, the, the, the doom foretold stuff. Um, I didn't see mm-hmm. doom foretold, but uh, it was all those. I was getting flashbacks. If they were playing treacherous blessing or, mm-hmm. or whatever it was called, almost certainly right. And, and was this the same deck that had the uh, the demonic pact? It might have. Uh, so maybe that's maybe it's a Doom Foretold deck. They're gonna sack it to the Doom Foretold. That's true. 
Or they blink it or something. Yeah, you blink it with Yorion. That's good. That seems pretty good. Anyway, um, Jeff, do you have any last thoughts for Explorer before we go to last call? No, I was planning on ending with uh, there's no bullshit blue-red turns deck yet, uh, and that's my favorite part. But, uh, <laughs> <coughs> there's, a, there's a part of me that, that fully believes that there will be a blue bullshit blue-red turns deck at some point. <laughs> I'm sure there will be, and we'll be there to hate on it. I just need more uh, more fodder for uh, for. I need more cards that say players can't take extra turns this turn or something. Um, in white. Yeah, you honestly, you just need a card that's just like if a player would take an extra turn, you take that extra turn instead. Exactly. Flash. Boom. Boom. Yeah, Let's actually, we already know what that card is called. It's called Parallel Futures, right? <laughs> yeah, that's, that's the right. card. <laughs> <laughs> We're really trying to sell our, our design here, you know. Yeah. Mark, Mark Rosewater, if you're listening, um, we do expect credit when this card gets printed. Exactly. So. Actually, yeah, he they're not allowed to to listen to people's uh, advice on cards. So so the, as soon as we started talking about a card, he would have stopped the recording and, and uh, ah yes. <laughs> yeah. Sorry, Gavin Verhey and all the other uh, the other um, designers. <laughs> that we did that it's so unprofessional anyway we don't make cards professionally so whatever i don't give a shit i'm finishing <laughs> like 20 some percent of beer right now so <laughs> 20 some that's that's good math yeah uh, yeah whatever <laughs> anyway i'm an actor who cares <laughs> <laughs> it is time for last call so we got to rate some beers tonight. We got some beefy big boys in little cans. Just monsters. I'm barely talking right yep. now because uh, <laughs> what these guys had to in store for us. Um, let's go through our rating system. As always, we rate our beers on a scale of bronze to mythic, just like the tears in arena. Which uh, we don't actually ladder up anymore because we have events. I know. So. I was gonna, do we have to change it to like one out of five, two out of five? Yeah. Whatever? Like just so. This is a four and one beer, beer or a five and zero <laughs> oh beer. Four, one, yeah. yeah. Well, it's a five zero oh, baby. <laughs> That's kind of nice. I mean, it also seems like a very boring rating system. I like the one we it's have. It's super boring. It yeah. doesn't actually like let people know that it's related to the game. The exactly. Uh, so, um, as always, this has nothing to do with which tier you are in because it doesn't really matter anymore. You could be in whatever tier and just be playing events and you won't rank up. So who even tiers, tiers are just for rating beers now. That's what they're for. That's what arena should change it so that they say that anyway. Mm -hmm. So, uh, bronze beers are trash. They're terrible. You can't finish them. They usually have... Like something crazy, like maple syrup or like I don't know yogurt or something, and you just can't you can't drink it. <laughs> yogurt, oh my god! <laughs> <laughs> now I must find a yogurt beer. <laughs> just for you, buddy. Silver. These are basically beers that just don't have a lot going on. Most of your macro brews tend to fall into this category. Gold beers are fine. You kind of drink them, but you don't really think about them, and you know they're just there. Yeah, platinum is they're they're good, they're solid, and you would you would drink it again. Diamond beers are exceptional. You really like these beers. You recommend these to your friends, and you you try to have them whenever. Like if you go to the store, you're like, I'm gonna get some of these because these are good ones. And mythic, these are of course the best of the best. These are the five and O's, slam dunk, home runs. Uh, you would recommend these to anyone who uh, even knows what beer is. Yeah. Uh, and if they don't know, you'll tell them because uh, they should drink that beer. Yeah. Oh, baby. Jeff, let's talk about these beers. Yeah. Do we? Do you know which one you want to pick? I think I do. Yeah, I think I also do. I also How are we going to like do the reveal, though? Because they look very, very similar. Well, <laughs> just, be... just say the title of the beer. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that'll, that'll clear it right up. Yeah. For sure. Um, okay, how about this? You, you'll say uh, uh, vitamin C for the beer I brought and equilibrium for the beer you brought. Okay, that makes sense. Yeah, yeah. So those are the, um, again, the, the, the breweries that they worked with to make these beers. Um, Collective Arts is the main one, and then these are all the other ones they brought in. So... All right. Counting off. Three. Three. Okay. 
two, one. Vitamin C. Whoa. Whoa. I didn't see that coming. Oh, man, the swap. The swap. Expected. What a <laughs> crazy episode. Yeah, damn. Okay. Um, Jeff, let's talk about your beer first since we're drinking it right now. Or, sorry, let's let's talk about the beer you chose that's my beer that okay. I didn't That was a very confusing choose. way to say that. I know. <laughs> um, yes, so, all right. The Equilibrium Origin of Darkness. Just to remind you, it's an Imperial Stout double barrel aged in bourbon and tawny port barrels with cherries, vanilla, and cacao nibs. Mm -hmm. Um, Yeah, I just felt like this one... First of all, I'll say I really liked both of them. Mm -hmm. Um, I am a big fan of Imperial Stouts, and I think both of these did meet my high expectations for the style. Um, But I preferred this one a little more in a sort of indescribable way, but basically I just felt like... I guess it just had a little more depth for me. The the different flavors they used, rather than sort of being a lot of the same kind of flavor combinations that I'm used to, they were more complementary, I guess, is sort of a way to, okay. to describe it. That's very interesting. I also liked them both. Um, and I think the reason that I didn't pick this one is because I think it's specifically the port barrels. Um, Right out of the can, you, can you, you. I will say you can definitely taste the port. Yeah, because like, yeah. um, right out of the can, uh, you could. It smelled different, and the first bit of the beer was like, woo, like this, and it and it it was something that was like really punchy, and I know you like punchy beers, um, love it. But it was also like uh, something that I was like, ooh, I hope that I settle into a place that I like, which I did. I did end up settling into a place that I liked, but it wasn't the same as like the other one where I was like, I'm just floating right into this one. Like it's exactly what I wanted it to be. This one, this like threw me off a little bit at first, Um, but also these are really high alcohol and it's hard to remember (laughs) uh, what it it tastes like. but yeah, I think literally the port barrel is what threw me off a little bit. Um, yeah, there's definitely like a hint of, of almost syrupiness. Yeah, which must be coming from the the port barrel, mm-hmm. uh, which I like but, port. And normally, I don't even like port. That's personally. So, <laughs> I like port. I will drink port by <laughs> itself. Um, yeah, I, I had a negative experience where I drank port, just thinking it was wine being like oh my god what the hell did i just drink yeah and i'm like drinking it in a teeny little cup with like a piece of chocolate yeah. on the side i'm like oh this is the mm-hmm. best thing ever right I, I kind of think of port as like the dessert of wines mm. kind of thing and that's exactly what it I'm is not a, not a dessert person so it makes sense that i might not like port so it's funny i'm also not a dessert person but i always tell people that i prefer to drink my dessert than eat it okay so That's if fair. if it's a if it's a drink i do i would i do like sweet stuff um but if it's like uh it's something i eat or a cake or something i usually don't like it very much and just to go on a bit of a tangent for the first time in this episode um <laughs> Being from Canada, you know, we're supposed to have excellent ice wine. Like, God, I hate ice wine. So uh, I feel like I'm not appreciating something that is made here that is su- we're supposedly known for. Yeah. I mean, obviously, the, with the climate. Um, but it's just like, it's just too desserty. It's like, it, it's really sweet and syrupy. And, uh, yeah. Yeah. It's good. Yeah, but, I mean, it's. So I actually, um, quick tangent because you just, you, you brought us on this. So, um, yeah. if you're not familiar, uh, obviously Canada's export is ice wine and, uh, it, they come in really small bottles. They're port, but made, they look clear. Almost all of them do. It's like really light in color, but I did buy a bottle for my folks when I was visiting Canada and we ended up pouring it on like barbecued, um, pears so we took fresh oh. pears and like put them on the barbecue so they were charred and then you poured ice wine on the top and it was like this nice sweet but like smoky thing and it ended up being like a complimentary dessert that was really just fruit um which made it See, feel i can get behind that it's like a gl- using it as a glaze it was basically like a glaze yeah and it, it didn't feel as um 
like we weren't just drinking it. It felt more like a thing that you was part of the, the meal. Um, and my folks loved that. But it was also like a, a bottle that was like in a cellar that I went to in Banff and like a random place. Um, mm-hmm. It wasn't just like Inniskillen's like um, ice right, wine. Right, yeah, yeah. It was, a, it was a nice one. Um, which Inniskillen is good too. But uh, but yes, it's definitely the bottle of... This is... A little pricey. This is, it's sweet. It's very sweet. This is a sweet wine. It's very sweet. It's sweet. And if you don't go in thinking that, then you will be right. thrown off. Uh, but here I liked it because it's sort of a hint. There's that hint of the syrupy sweetness coming from the port barrels that... Mm-hmm. I like responded to and I was like, okay, I can tell that that's coming from the port, but I actually like it here sort of balances with the cacao and vanilla mm-hmm. uh, flavor. So I don't know. I just felt like this one is a little deeper and the other one, you know, which we'll talk about in a minute just has a few flavors that I picked out and it, they told me they were in there, but I'm just not the biggest fan of them. Now mm-hmm. that I, I know what a certain thing is. Um, Interesting. So let's, uh, let's, let's stick with this. Equilibrium. What do you give this? You know what? I'm just going to go ahead and, for me, throw this right in Mythic. Yeah. Let's just do it. I don't give Mythic out often enough. You really this don't. Beer. This, <laughs> this beer is great. Um, like, if this comes back, I, I know this is sort of a rotating thing where they're always working with different breweries, and that makes me a bit sad. And so that sort of is my clue, I guess, that this is... This is mythic because it's like if I ever see that, it'd be like, damn, that's the one that I like. Um, and because of this conversation, I'm going to remember, oh, there's port barrels involved, <laughs> so be able to, to keep my eye on it. Mm-hmm. I um, um, I really agree with that. <sighs> Just for so I can remember, I'll probably give a diamond, like really high diamond. But like, I'm not going to throw it into yeah. mythic. Um, obviously, I didn't pick this one but um let's go into the other origin of darkness the vitamin c brewing company um the imperial stout aged in rum barrels with coffee almonds lactose and speculus cookies speculus so if you don't know what this is we also didn't know what this is so we looked it up during the break these are those biscoff cookies it's like biscoff is like the the main manufacturer like the the brand name for what this cookie is it's kind of like a camer- caramelized kind of gingerbread-y thing, um, which I love. I love them. So that could easily... So I also... Sorry. I ahead. also checked out pronunciation. Okay. According to Google, it's speculos. Speculos. Weird. It doesn't look like that. But also, whatever. Okay, so... That sp- feels like a bastardization of, of the spelling. Speculos. That's like... Like it, it dinged that I'm from North America, and it's like it's pronounced speculos. <laughs> <laughs> it's like, this like, is, there's no way that's how it's. This pronounced. is how people in North America <laughs> say it. Um, anyway, so it's like those Biscoff cookies if you had them, um, and I think it's paired. Biscoff. Yeah, Biscoff, whatever. Uh, <laughs> and I think it's paired very nicely with the 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 coffee, and then you get like almonds in it, um, which also has like biscotti kind of flavor to it, and then. Um, milk in your coffee, I guess, which is the lactose, um, which these are all very classic Imperial Stout flavors with the exception to the cookies. Um, but, uh, yeah, it was exactly what I was hoping the Imperial Stouts would taste like. And uh, right off the bat, I was just, yes, this is what I wanted. This is exactly what I was looking for. I was very happy. Yeah. Um, me too. I really did like it. And you can get the coffee, which I love because sometimes the coffee flavors drowned out by the everything else they're doing mm-hmm. in some of these beers. Um, like they almost don't want people to taste coffee. So they go to their way to make you not. And they didn't do that here. Definitely taste some coffee. Um, but one of my problems was like, you know, that like, like feeling you get where you're like, what is that? And I felt like it was gingerbread <laughs> and I don't really like gingerbread. And so when we looked it up, that that's when it all clicked. The the speculos cookies are sort of gingerbready. Yeah. And I was like, that's what I'm tasting. It's the, and it was always just this thing kind of at the back of my tongue. It's like, is that gingerbread? Why am I tasting gingerbread? gingerbread? That's so funny. Just because, like I, that's like one of my favorite Christmas cookies. Like I love gingerbread cookies, and mm-hmm. ginger snaps and, and anything that's like that and dipping it specifically in coffee that I put Bailey's in or something is like I Wait, love no that. You loved this yeah, one. Yeah, so that's that's what it tastes like. Yeah, it tastes exactly <laughs> like the the kinds of things I like. So, um mm-hmm. that just happens to be how those things go. All right, so with this I'm going to give this one mythic. 
I love this one. And yeah, we'll just swap on this. I'll give it diamonds because yep. I liked the other one better. But it's still very, very good. Yeah. Uh, and I love that it gives you that coffee. And the lactose actually works here probably mm-hmm. because it's going with coffee and, and cookies. Yeah. So it makes sense to use lactose as a tie-in. Mm-hmm. So great beers this week. Easily all mythic, but uh, we restrained ourselves a little bit, I think. Um, mm-hmm. But... Hey, if, w- sorry, if, when, no, next year when Collective Arts is doing their, their Origin of Darkness, like, check these out. These are gr- very good. Like. Yeah, and some of these breweries, like I know Vitamin C, you were saying, <coughs> is, is in the States. Mm-hmm. So, like, maybe you, this, for some of you who are listening somewhere that Collective Arts might work with, you, maybe you'll see this and be like, hey, I remember Collective Arts, those, those. That's Canadian guys we're talking about. So. Exactly. Sorry, that Canadian and American guy we're talking about. Um, <laughs> um, but uh, but yeah, I hope that um, maybe your you know equilibrium is your your hometown brewery and you you found Collective Arts this way. Um, and dang, they do uh, they do some good work. I, I'm I'm going to now be looking forward to Origin of Darkness every year because I was unfamiliar with it until this year. So. Uh, and I did try all the other ones, and they're all fantastic. They are all great. Yeah, I still have the peanut butter one in my fridge. Ooh, so I'm excited to it's try that. Good. One it's good. It's <laughs> good. Uh, anyway, we are coming into closing time. So as always, you can find us at Arena Regulars on Twitter and Instagram. You can also find us on MTG Arena, probably playing some Explorer. We'll be under the username Arena Regulars Podcast. If you want to talk to me personally, you can find me at Zulberg, that is Z-E-U-L-B-E-R-G, at Twitter and Instagram. But Jeff, where can they find you? Yeah, I'm on Twitter uh, at BluesBrews, M-T-G, B-L-U-E-S-B-R-E-W-S-M-T-G. And please leave us a review on Apple Podcasts, on iTunes, follow us on Spotify and Stitcher. Leave us a review on Spotify, any of those places. It really makes a difference for us to just know what you think of the show and um, give us any feedback that you would uh, like to. We, we do take it to heart, so um, we want to make the show as uh, the, just the best it can be. Yeah, if there's something you're like, man, I like this show, I really wish they did this thing instead of this thing. We might actually do that if you tell us, so yeah, just let us know. Unless it's more alchemy content. I think we're just going to be forced into that. But well, Someone's like, I really wish they stopped drinking beer and talked about alchemy instead. We might not do that one. But, uh. Yeah, probably not that one. Um, we will continue to drink beer, and that's the only way we'll get through alchemy episodes. But anyway, <laughs> this has been the Arena Regulars. Reminding you that drinking two Imperial Stouts back-to-back is... A lot. Good night. All right, that's fine.